If you follow any health influencer, you've probably heard about the two studies that have come out telling us that microplastics are in our arterial plaque and in men's testicles, all men's testicles. This is a big deal. I mean, microplastics are contributing to arterial walls narrowing and our fertility crisis. It often makes us want to toss all plastic in our lives and avoid foods that are high in microplastics. While this isn't a bad thing, it gets overwhelming quickly. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you where microplastics are in our world and three effective ways to greatly reduce our intake without going insane. Welcome to the Therapeutic Food Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Marion Mitchell. I'm an integrative nutrition health coach, therapeutic diet expert, and founder of The Road to Living Whole. There are many different diets out there. It's hard to know which one is right for you with your chronic illness and autoimmune disease. In this podcast, I'm going to share with you the foundational pieces every single therapeutic diet out there shares, and also how to use the best one for your particular diagnosis. If you've been looking for a meal planning partner, help navigating the complicated healthcare system, and want to feel better quickly, I'm your girl. Grab your kombucha and notebook, Let's dive in. Two major studies came out sharing with us just how dangerous microplastics are to our health. One is from the New England Journal of Medicine sharing their findings of microplastics and arterial plaque. Here's a quote from the study. Carotid artery plaque in which NMPs, which is micro and nano, nanoplastics, were detected had a higher risk of composite of myocardial infarction, stroke, or death from any cause at 34 months of follow-up than those whom NMPs were not detected. The other study is from uh, Comprehensive Urology, and here's a quote from their analysis. Studies suggest that microplastics can accumulate in human testicular tissue, potentially impacting sperm quality. Exposure to these part particles have been linked to reduced fertility, although the exact mechanism is still under investigation. This is a big deal, you guys, like huge. Now, as a health coach and a human, I know the temptation is you are going to want to do everything in your power to avoid consuming microplastics. And this is great. Don't get me wrong. The problem is that they are in everything. They're in our water, especially in those throwaway plastic water bottles. They're in sea salt, fish, honey, beer, produce, especially apples and carrots, but have been found in other produce as well. Rice. Uh, coffee, if you use K-cups and tea, if you used the tea that's in tea bags and the list goes on, you can't just not drink water or eat produce or avoid seafood or not eat salt. You'll be way more unhealthy than if you ate them. So you might be wondering how the heck am I supposed to realistically minimize my intake of microplastics, Marion? Luckily, there are three things that we can do quite easily, in my opinion, that will greatly reduce how many microplastics you ingest. Have your paper and pencil ready, write them down. Switch away from plastic cutting boards to wood ones. Stop drinking water from disposable water bottles you get from the grocery store and from the tap. Instead, invest in a water filter that filters out microplastics. And drink as much water from home that you have filtered that you can and switch away from plastic food storage to glass or stainless steel. It's that simple. By those three things alone, you will dramatically reduce your intake of microplastics. It's kind of crazy if you think about it, right? Is there more that you can do? Yes. Is it always realistic and obtainable? Not always. Can you look for salt companies that talk about filtering out microplastics from their salt? For sure. Can you shop from farmer's markets as much as possible? Some people can, some people can't. Can you use a reusable metal K cup instead of a throwaway instead of the throwaway plastic ones? Totally doable for most people when you can afford it. Can you swap out plastic food storage bags for silicone ones? Sure but they're really super expensive and out of reach for a lot of people today. Might as well just use the glass or stainless steel containers 
instead. They work just as well. But we all have to start somewhere, right? And these three will make the biggest impact the fastest. And you can do within a pretty much the next seven days for the most part, right? If you can get to a place or already in a place where you can do more, awesome. But if not, just know that these three changes alone will have a huge impact on your health. Now, I want to dive into why these three are so effective. So when you're swapping your plastic cutting boards for wooden ones, you are not getting plastic in your food. Like, I don't know if you've looked at your plastic cutting board lately, but there's usually a lot of cut lines in them, right? They just get cut along with the food that you're processing on them. Those plastics have to go somewhere and they're going in your food and then into your body. I know a lot of people shy away from wood because they tend to split. That's because you don't know how to take care of it. So you have to take care of your wooden cutting boards. So some people swear by not using dish soap on them and just using salt with lemon juice. So you get, you cut a lemon in half or like in a quarter or whatever. And then you use coarse sea salt and you rub the, you rub the salt in with the lemon and that will disinfect them. Other people use dish soap, but you also have to like moisten the wood. And I use a a mineral oil free wood butter that you do a few times a year. I, I do it every couple of months on my wooden cooking utensils and on my cutting boards. And this will help prevent them from splitting. The splitting is where bacteria can enter and then formulate, but that happens on plastic ones too. So, you know, the wood ones will last just as long, if not longer than the plastic ones, if you take care of them properly. And yes, it's a little bit more effort, but it has a huge impact on minimizing microplastics. Okay. Number two, filter your water with filters that are known to and have been tested for reducing or eliminating microplastics in your water. There are some great filtration systems out there. They range from a pitcher that you, you know, like almost a Brita water filter, but a different filter because the Brita ones don't remove microplastics or much of anything really. It's basically just a charcoal filter that removes some things, but not a lot. Okay. So there are some great filters out there where you can buy a pitcher all the way up to whole house systems. It just depends on what you can afford. Do what you can afford. You know, uh, in my home, we use a gravity filtration system. My parents use an under the sink one. I have friends that have a whole home system. I have a friend, I have friends that just have pictures. Do what makes sense for you in this moment, in this time, you can always do more later, but if you focus on the drinking water, that's the big one and filter as much as you can in my home with our gravity filter. I don't mind warm water, but my family doesn't like it. So we got glass pitchers with lids. Right. And we, and we keep like, we have four pitchers or so family of six. We have four pitchers uh, in the fridge at all times of filtered water. And so you can have like a little gravity pitcher, but then you can get those glass ones with the lid and you can have multiple bottles of water. So you're not filtering it, drinking warm water all the time. And third, uh, when you switch away from plastic food storage to glass or stainless steel to store, and obviously not steel, but if you use glass to reheat your food, this can be the, probably the most expensive one, I think, but you can do it a little at a time. So you can start with just not putting hot food or reheating and, or reheating in the plastic container. You can Wait for the food to cool, put it in the container, and then put it on a plate or a bowl before reheating more dishes. But you can do that, and that will greatly reduce the amount of microplastics that get into your food. While at the same time, you might go to like TJ Maxx or Walmart or Ross, or, you know, sometimes I have them at Fry's, uh, Kroger, or whatever, um, where you can get glass storage containers. You can buy one at a time. Or, you know, you can wait for, or you can run to Costco and get a whole system, you know, with multiple sizes and lids and stuff all the way. Do whatever financially makes sense for you. And don't, don't go into debt. Don't, you know, sacrifice food 
for storage containers, just do what you can. And eventually, you know, you'd be surprised if one wants a paycheck, you spend four to $7 on a container in three months, you've replaced everything. Okay. You don't have to go broke. You can give yourself time to transition. And in the meantime, just don't freeze them. Don't heat them. And you know, you'll be, okay. you'll be okay. It will reduce the amount of plastics that you're getting. Cause you're not reheating or putting hot food or freezing, which breaks down the chemical bonds, which then causes it to get into your food. If I had to pick a place to start, it would be the home water filtration option. And then, and not using the throwaway disposable water bottles. Then from there, I would do whatever makes sense in my life. Like maybe you already use wood cutting boards. So you go for the containers um, or maybe you're going to switch, you know, maybe you're like, you know what? I drink a lot of coffee from those plastic K cups. I'm going to spend the $10 on a steel one. I think when I bought it was $10 and today's market, I don't know what it is, but you'll spend the money on a reusable metal one, right? Or maybe you'll just switch away from curing in general, and maybe go towards, um, other ways to make coffee. You just have to do whatever makes sense, right? You do the best that you have with what you have where you're out. Okay. And yeah, that's really, those three will have such a huge impact. And then you can slowly go from there, but don't not eat things that are healthy for you because you're scared of microplastics we do what we can with what makes sense and we can do more over time. It's okay to, to slowly make changes. If you would like support in making changes, especially with your diet, you can join my online coaching course. It's the therapeutic food framework in there. We also get coaching sessions, but I teach you how to eat healthy plus support healing from chronic illness by t- and I teach you stress management strategies and simple ways to reduce your exposure to environmental toxins that go beyond plastic, right? I go into a lot of environmental toxins and so much more all in an online coaching format. I will have the link for that in the show notes. And if you want to know if it's a good fit for you, go ahead and go to my website and schedule a 30 minute consult. They're completely free. And I'll be able to share with you exactly how I can help you with your specific situation you have going on. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you found this episode helpful, would you do me a favor and help others find it by leaving a review, sharing a screenshot on social media, or sharing the link with a friend? By you sharing what you've learned, others are able to find this podcast and join our community. Be sure to check out my website, www.roadtolivingwhole.com for over 160 delicious recipes, a variety of meal plans, and a blog packed full of even more healthy living tips. If you'd like to learn more about how to work with me as your coach, you can schedule a free consult through www road to living whole.com backslash health dash coaching backslash until next time friend bye